Hello everyone, it's that college football guy back again with another video. Well, I mentioned it at the tail end of my video yesterday because it popped up on the top of my phone here. And I didn't pay it no mind because I didn't expect it to happen in the first place. Was the, the Pac-12 Big 12 merger is not happening. Which is no surprise to anybody who could figure this because all these mergers are based on money. You're telling me a conference is going to be a charity case and take on schools and everybody's going to take less money to bring somebody in? No. So the Pac-12, Big 12 merger is off because some of the markets are not viable, which isn't a surprise. The Pac-12 ACC coast-to-coast -coast merger, which I couldn't wrap my head around it trying to figure out how the heck this would happen, but that was a non-starter, apparently. That's not happening. I mentioned my main video yesterday was about NBC and the Big 12 and, uh, and Notre Dame. Well, apparently Notre Dame's information, and this is what I think on there, August 4th is what multiple people have told me is when we're supposed to find out the, the new TV deal for the Pac-12. First week in August, basically. Well, apparently the first week in August, the initial negotiation period will be announced for what NBC's offer to Notre Dame will be. Same week. So, basically the first week of August, a lot can happen. A lot. Now, the Big 12 is apparently, and this is rumors, so take it with a grain of salt, that they are, you know, trying to find out. The NBC thing is big for the Big 12 because if not only will Notre Dame find out its money, but as I said yesterday, they're linked to being a possible television partner with NBC for every time Notre Dame has a game. So they'd be probably tier two rights. Maybe, I'm not sure. I'm not exactly sure, to be honest with you, how tier one and tier two work. So I have absolutely no idea, but they would want to have them for those seven Notre Dame games. They'd want to have Big 12 games before, after, or both to bring their content up and to make it more of a college football home. And I I understand that I agree with it. I like NBC getting involved in this because we need somebody else besides ESPN and Fox involved in this. CBS was involved with the SEC. Now ESPN has the SEC. I'd love to see CBS do more. And apparently CBS is working at the group of five level. They're supposedly, and this is a big rumor, and I have absolutely no faith in this, but then again, who knows, that they will be interested in bidding on Conference USA's television contract. Um... Be perfectly blunt, is there even a Conference USA after everybody left to go to the Sun Belt in the American? I mean, they got decimated. Their TV contract officially ends June 30th, 2023, next year, less than a year from now. So they've been negotiating a new deal. Maybe CBS is working on that one. I know CBS has got to deal with the Mountain West, which is the whole reason why the Pac-12 debacle, I think Fox helped to orchestrate it. Because if the Pac-12 implodes, as it's expected, and the Big 12's TV deal is way bigger, because the big rumor that came out, and this is also a rumor, but again, we won't, this is a rumor, no proof. People have been saying it and reporting it, but that doesn't mean it's accurate. First week in August, we will know definitively, we hope, of what the numbers are. But according definitively to them, the Big 12, not Big 12, I'm sorry, the Pac-12 will be getting $25 million per school. $250 million contract for the 10 schools. Now, Pac-12, we're making $21 million, So it's a $4 million a year raise. It's not much, but at least it's something. The question is, is that how much is the Big 12 going to make? And the Big 12 will get an initial offer, supposedly, when NBC makes their offer to Notre Dame, if Notre Dame's going to get their money, this is how much the Big 12 would make. And if the Big 12's offer comes in, it could be a bidding war between Fox, CBS, NBC for the Big 12, which would be rather interesting. A team that was a team, a conference that was on life support a year ago, now is in the driver's seat to be the third best Power 5 conference, and it could end up being a Power 3. 
for all we know. It could very shortly be a power four. It could stay a power five. So a lot of things can happen. First week in August, a lot of this is going to shake out. A lot of it. Because we'll know then what the formal offer is of the Pac-12. And that doesn't mean they're going to take it. Because that was the 30-day exclusive window for ESPN, who wanted to be the primary, to negotiate. After that, everybody's allowed to make a bid. ESPN makes their first offer, and that's going to be known. Then everybody else can make a bid, and we can see, and there could be a bidding war for the Pac-12, potentially. The whole thing about Fox not wanting to bid on it, they may not have wanted to bid on it initially, so that way they can come in over the top and outbid somebody for it, but not bid too crazy. Which makes sense. I mean, don't spend more money than you have to. I mean, that's obvious business sense. But who knows, folks? I mean, there's too many moving parts right now. Too many, too many things that are going on. And as I've been saying from the beginning, the only people who truly know what's going on are not talking. And there could be a lot of misinformation going out. In fact, I'm pretty sure there's a lot of misinformation going out. Guys throwing up ideas out there to the media and to people like me. Except I have never gotten any direct information from anybody except for people I know who were in the Pac-12 about what they've heard. But what's been heard is nobody in the athletic department or in the university president slash chancellor's office. None of that. So I can't say definitively I know what that will be. I don't expect the Pac-12 to implode right now. I just don't see it. I just... 25 million, though, is is low ball. I mean, I figured they were to get 30. I mean, the offer I heard originally, you know, we would have offered you 500 million if USC and UCLA would have stayed, but now we're going to offer you 300 million, which is 30 million bucks for a school. That's 9 million more a year. That's a substantial raise. And I figured everybody would be like, okay, fine. We're staying. 10-year deal. We're good. I figure that's the end of it. It's done. Because the one thing everybody seems to forget, I've heard this rumor, this rumor, they're going to raid the Mountain I don't see them raiding the Mountain West. The Pac-12 is, let me say this again, obsessed with academic standards. The reason no Mountain West school is in the Big 12, is in the Pac-12 now is because none of them are AAU status. None of them. The only three schools in the Pac-12 right now that are not AAU status are the three state schools. I've said this earlier. Washington State, Oregon State, and Arizona State. Those are the three schools that do not have AAU status. Everybody else does. And AAU means a lot to the Pac-12. Your academic rating, your research rating, your medical research rating. All of those are important to the Pac-12. You have to be basically an AAU school right now to get in or borderline. Nobody in the Mountain West fits that now, that narrative. So I don't see them doing this. The whole linchpin of this whole thing for the Pac-12's future is not really if the four schools leave. Because, I mean, if the offer is good, they may consider it the big thing. Arizona's out the door. Right. The only one who could have a backdoor clue about any of this is Colorado because they were previously in the Big 12. So they know some of the people are still there or were there and have connections. They still know people that know people. So they'll know things about the Big 12. So I don't, they're the only ones I figure they could make the move. Arizona's going to make the move first. I see Colorado being the one to be making the move, but that's if the TV deal is trash. And if the TV deal is $25 million a year, I'm hoping not. I'm hoping for more for their sake. Because ideally, I don't want a Power 5 folding. And they said, oh, a Power if the Pac-12 has problems and everybody gets left, there's only four schools, they'll just take the whole Mountain West, make it a 16-team conference. The Pac-12 becomes group of five if you do that. Or should I say group of six? Their whole key to this is one simple thing. It's like Arizona, Washington, and Oregon leave. The two biggest brands, potentially. 
the two most powerful teams in the conference right now are Oregon and Utah. But the two biggest brands are Washington and Oregon. Most people would say. Stanford, on the other hand, but we'll see what happens. All of this is a pipe dream. We'll see. What, all this is rumor in any window, but folks, it all depends on the first week of August. So we're going to be hearing some crazy more rumors. I've heard some other ones right now recently, and I'm not even going to dignify them with putting them on here because there's some of them are absolutely idiotic. So I'm not going to say anything about them, but first week of August, a lot of this realignment is going to shake out. And could the Pac-12 be in trouble? Possibly. Their TV deal is going to dictate a lot. NBC's initial offer to Notre Dame and Notre Dame wanting $75 million. If they get in the ballpark with thanks to the Big 12 and Notre Dame stays independent and doesn't go to the Big 10, that closes the door possibly on Washington and Oregon for now. We'll see. But anyway, this is that college football guy. I'm glad you watched the video all the way to the end. If you liked the video, give me a thumbs up down there. Comment anything, any mistakes I made, any information I'm wrong. I'll take criticism and I'm I was wrong about Iowa State's AAU status. They voluntarily left because they were to be an AAU school. You have to concentrate more on medical, and they were more agricultural. That's why they voluntarily left their AAU status. And there was a press release I read after it was mentioned to me, and I apologized, and I was wrong about it, and I fully admit that. But anyway, comment down below, and if you like this channel, give me a subscribe. Let's see if we can grow this channel to be something bigger. So... I thank everybody for watching this video, and as always, everyone, be good to each other.